Welcome to my channel. My name is Elizabeth Weiser. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I've learned everything I know about makeup from YouTube and I created this channel to share what I've learned with you. My hope is to answer some basic makeup questions and help you feel more confident in your makeup routine. If that's something that sounds interesting to you, then please consider subscribing. Today we're going to be talking about the contouring makeup products, which includes contour, bronzer, blush, and highlighter. Before I got into makeup, I only used blush, and so it took some time and experimentation for me to figure out what these products were for and where I should be putting them on my face. I'm going to be sharing my tips and tricks with you today, but do keep in mind that where you place these products is going to depend on your face shape and what flatters you most. I encourage you to take this information and go out and experiment and do a little bit more research on your own to find out what's going to work best for you. So contouring is used to enhance or change your face shape. You may have seen someone with like really stark lines on their cheeks. That's an example of extreme contour. Contouring is mimicking shadows and bone structure. And so you want it to be matte and have a cool or gray undertone as opposed to a warm undertone. I have seen many people use a matte bronzer to contour, which is perfectly fine. But if you were to ask a professional makeup artist, they will use two separate products for bronzing and contouring. So I have this Essence Contouring Palette. I'm going to be using the darker contour shade today. See how this is a little bit grayer and cooler in undertone as opposed to a bronzer, which is a little more, more warm and more reddish toned. That's why I'm using this as a contour shade as opposed to a bronzer. So I don't do this on a regular basis. First off, I'm not super talented with contouring just because I haven't experimented with it a lot. I usually will contour with my bronzer a little bit. Um, but I did want to show you the difference because that was really helpful to me to learn the difference between contouring and bronzing. So I am going to do a little bit of this today. And I'm going to start by contouring my cheeks, which I think is the most common thing that people will do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and contour right here on my cheekbone. Um, and this is where like maybe if people wanted to raise it, they would go a little bit higher. I'm just going to go ahead and contour my natural cheekbone. So I'm going to go in really lightly with that darker contour shade. And I'm just going to press it into place. Now, one of the biggest differences between contour and bronzer is that you want your contour to stay pretty concentrated because it's mimicking bone structure. Your bone doesn't go all over your entire face. It's in specific spots. So that's a bit much, but I wanted you to be able to see the difference that that how that lifts my face here as opposed to this side of my cheek. It just gives me a little bit more structure there. So now that I've got that initial powder down, I'm going to blend it out gently so that it, it blends in a little bit better. Again, this isn't one of my strongest talents, so don't take this at face value. People who are good at contouring make this look better. <laughs> I just wanted to kind of show you the difference so that you can be a little bit more educated about what these products are and how you should be using them. Okay, so now that I've got that blended in, I'm actually also going to go under the jawline right here, which would be another place that people would typically contour. And then some people will do their nose. I typically don't, but you know what? Let's just try it for funsies. Okay, so I just did it on this side of the face. Can you see how that just gave me a little bit more structure and it lifted my face as opposed to over here? I don't have the roundest face, I don't have the thinnest face, um, but this just kind of helps pull everything together, give me a little bit more structure there. I'm gonna go ahead and do it on the other side so I can balance it out for the video. See, and I did a much better job with that on this cheek than I did over here. So bronzer is used to warm up the face and kind of mimics a suntanned like complexion. This usually ends up in similar areas as the contour does, um, but bronzer has a warmer undertone. Sometimes it has a bit of a sheen and it's less concentrated and more blended out throughout the face. So I always place contour right under the cheekbone and kind of warm up this area of my face. Then I go along the jawline and then down the neck. You don't want your face to look like a lot tanner than your neck, so do make sure that you blend this down your neck. And if you're wearing your hair up like I am today, you want to take that pretty far back so you don't have like a white neck compared to the front of your neck. And then I usually will place this along my hairline because this is the area where sun would catch most is those high points of your face. Um, and again, we're mimicking that suntan light complexion. So I went ahead and just put bronzer on this side. Do you see the slightest difference that that made in my complexion and how that also did add a little bit of structure to my face? But again, this is more to add warmth back into the face after you flatten out your complexion with foundation. So you can kind of see right here that that looks really muddy because I mixed the contour and the bronzer. Again, 
I'm not the most talented at contouring and that's pretty much why I don't do it is because I'm not very good at blending it together and making it look really seamless and natural. So keeping that in mind, what I usually will do is I don't use a separate contour and bronzer product. I will take my bronzer usually with um, a brush kind of like this and I will concentrate it right here to shape out my cheekbones. And then I'll go in and blend with um, my fluffier brush like this. That way it adds a little bit of structure to my cheekbones, but I'm not getting that real muddy look. And that's what a lot of people do if they're not professional makeup artists. They won't go in with a separate contour and bronzer product. They'll just go ahead and use their bronzer. So if you're interested in getting into contouring, I would start with a bronzer first, just so it's gonna look a little bit more seamless together. And then if you're really interested, go into the separate contour product. So where you place your blush can have a large impact on your face shape. Depending on your face shape, it might not be the most flattering to put your blush right on the apples of your cheeks. For me, like I said, my face tends to be a little bit rounder. So putting blush right on the apples of my cheeks makes my face look rounder and fuller because by bringing that color right here, you're emphasizing the fullness of the apples of your cheeks. If you have a longer, thinner face, you might wanna have that effect to add that fullness into your face. And so you might want to put the blush on the apples of your cheeks. But for me, I don't wanna do that. So what I do instead, so to kind of add to this lifting of the face structure, I actually concentrate my blush back here, right at my hairline, right above my cheekbone, okay? And then I start to kind of blend it in towards the inner part of my face. I do have a lot of natural redness in my cheeks right here that peeks through no matter what I do. So what I will do is I will focus the blush up here and then kind of gently blend it in so that it all kind of seems to blend together and it doesn't just look like this weird spot here and there. I also try to go in as lightly as possible with my blush and build it up because um, you never know with a blush like how intense it's gonna look and it's hard to take it off. So I always just kind of pat it in and build it up as I need to. And again, see how that adds to lifting the face as opposed to filling the face. I, I do need to go out today, so I don't wanna put blush on the apples of my cheeks to show you the difference, um, but try it with yourself. If you only ever put your blush here, try putting it here and see if you like that. It really does make a difference in your face shape. I have also seen people take their blush like across the nose a little bit. I don't particularly like that. Um, but you might like that, especially if you do like your blush on the apples of your cheeks, just to kind of connect it across, it can look pretty cute. If you do find that you went in a little too heavy with something or things aren't quite blending together with all these cheek products, especially if you're used to just putting on blush and now you got highlighter and bronzer and contour, you can always go in with your wet sponge and just kind of dab and it'll just help melt everything into the skin. Things will look a little bit less powdery, just kind of helps blend everything together. So highlighting serves as kind of the opposite of contour. With contour, you wanna darken areas and bring them back to mimic that shadow. With highlighter, you want to bring light to the face and you wanna bring those areas of your face forward. So I'm gonna talk about highlighting in two forms, using a concealer and using a highlighting powder. So I've seen many people highlight their eyes, under eye area, and the center of their face using a concealer that is a shade or two lighter than their foundation. Doing this helps brighten the eye area, as you can see in this clip, lifts the eyes and balances out your face shape. Some YouTubers do this giant triangle concealer trend under the eyes. I personally think that is too much for the average person and emphasizes too much texture for me. Highlighting brings light to those areas and you do wanna be careful not to highlight and therefore emphasize texture in your face if that's something that bothers you. So for me, I use just a slightly lighter concealer under the eyes when I want that highlighting effect. I'm gonna be using a pretty strong highlighter today so you can really see where I'm placing this as I'm talking about it. I've only ever used um, powder highlighters, but just know that there are liquid and cream highlighters out there. And actually there's liquid and cream blushes, bronzers, contours. You can get anything you want in cream if you'd rather have that. But I'm gonna be using the powder today. So you wanna place highlighters on the high points of your face where you would like to draw light. For most people, that's right here at the top of the cheeks. Now you do wanna be careful not to bring this too far inward because then you're gonna be emphasizing texture under the eye. And a lot of times this tends to get like wrinkly and cakey, especially for me because of how much my face moves. If you're maturing a little bit, you definitely probably have some texture under here. So just do be careful not to pull this in too far forward. If you're just starting out with highlighter, dip in lightly, tap off the excess and be as light as you can as possible because you never know how much of this is gonna come off and you can always add, but it's hard to take it off if you overdo it. So see how that brings a little bit of light to my face, but I didn't bring it in down here. 
I just put it right above that blush. So it kind of goes bronzer, blush, highlighter in that sense. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. For some people, just doing that might be enough. And one thing I will usually do too is kind of make this C shape around the eye. So I'll bring the highlighter there and then I'll also put a little bit right here. For me, the biggest thing is that the center of my forehead always looks shiny. If you ask my mom, she complains that the center of our foreheads look shiny in every family photo, in my wedding photos, all our foreheads always look shiny. So what I do is I put this highlighter right here. That way, when the light comes towards my face, it's gonna catch there and not the center of my forehead making me look oily. I'm not really sure if this method helps with the pictures, but I feel like it does, so I keep doing it. <laughs> People will also highlight their nose. For me, I do have this like really high point of my nose, so I'll highlight that, or some people will do the tip of their nose, kind of looks cutesy, like the people who take the blush across their nose usually will put a little bit of highlight on the tip of my nose, and you know what, I enjoy that sometimes. I like the little shiny tip of the nose. And then I'll also take my highlighter above my cupid's bow. Usually I do this before my lipstick, but I did the rest of my makeup first today. And see how that just kind of draws light to those areas of the face. It doesn't look powdery. It doesn't look like something excessive. It's just kind of giving you this nice little glow. One thing that also can make a really big difference, and you can do this with your highlighter or you can do this with a highlighting shade in your eyeshadow palette, depending on what you're doing that day, is I will highlight the inner corner of my eyes. And then I'll also go right here under the brow bone. And again, sometimes I use like a shimmery highlighter shade in an eyeshadow palette instead of my highlighter. Um, but see how that from this eye looks just slightly darker now. And that just kind of lifted and opened up this eye. Just adding that little bit of shimmer made that big difference. And now this light's coming in this way. I also concentrate my concealer right here, and that will help kind of also naturally highlight and brighten that inner eye. And then again, if you're having everything kind of mesh together really well, you can go in with a setting spray and that kind of just helps melt everything into the face and look very natural. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And again, I'm going to press that into the skin. It seems like an unnecessary step, but you know what? It does make a difference. And if it's something I have time to do, I definitely like to do that. Okay, well that is everything for today. I hope this video was helpful. This was something in particular that really confused me when I was watching other people's YouTube videos because they were putting this stuff called highlighter and bronzer on their face and I didn't understand where they were putting it or why they were putting it there or why I needed it. So I really needed someone to explain to me like what this stuff was for. Robert Welsh was someone who really helped me figure that out. He's a professional makeup artist here on YouTube. I will link his channel below, especially if you're interested in the more specifics of contour. He really goes into that and he shows it on his own face in a way that works better than me. But just kind of giving you an idea, the biggest way for me to figure out where I wanted to put these on my face was experimenting with it on my own face myself because you're the only person who knows how you're gonna like these things. So if you've never considered using a bronzer or moving your blush around your face, try it. It might make a really big difference and you know really amp up your makeup routine. So I hope that this was helpful. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you viewing my videos and I hope to see you again very soon in my next one. Bye.